Um, professor Wang, as the Professor of Marketing and Innovation at Warwick Business School, I know you're one of the world's leading academics in luxury and luxury consumerism, so I'm delighted that you agreed to come on board as an advisor to the House of Britannia. Could you give me your impression of the role of British luxury in Far Eastern markets? Yes, the uh, British luxury uh, has been a very important, if you like, luxury uh, country in, in countries in, in Far East uh, and in emerging markets such as China and India. Uh, so when they think about luxury, they think about British luxury, French luxury and Italian luxury. So British luxury is definitely out there. Uh, in particular, they probably think about Burberry, they think about Jaguar Land Rover, they think about menswear, tailored, particular jives and, and hawks, and um, Sound Seeker, which is associated with the James Bond movie. Um, so yeah, a whole bunch of British luxury brands have been very successful in emerging markets. What is the perception of the consumer in Far Eastern markets of British luxury? This is a really good question because uh, in the past luxury has been considered more generally European. But now I think British luxury has started to be associated with some unique characteristics that we actually set ourselves apart from other European luxuries. Uh, so in particular if you think about the associations of British luxury uh, by, uh, by those uh, consumers in emerging markets. They associate with royalty, they associate with the nobility. So in general, they associate with uh, the, if you like, refined lifestyle, particularly for example, countryside lifestyle. Tell me, how do you think um, Far Eastern consumers view British luxury? The need for luxury brands uh, are qu is quite different depending on where you are. Uh, so in China, there are still a large group of middle class consumers who are aspirational. So their needs are particularly to, to be seen, to fit in uh, a particular group of people um, which are becoming rich uh, in general. But that have moved on, so they evolve, evolve, you know, has evolved into a more of internal need, a spiritual and emotional needs. And uh, British luxury provides that particular experience. So what is considered to be very important and unique for British luxury is that it provides that whole experience with a luxury lifestyle. So it's not just buying a handbag and show off to your friends, but it's also to fulfill their need to pursue literary and artistic um, interests that actually satisfies their need, uh, their personal need, rather than just showing off. We've spoken before about the concept of meta-luxury. Could you just expand a little on that for us? So meta-luxury has certainly a very important position in those people who are already made it rather than who is making it. Uh, so they want to separate themselves, differentiate themselves from just uh, affordable and, and so-called new luxury into a more discerning a group of customers. And so we have, as House of Britannia, we are promoting such brands, heritage brands. I may not call it meta-luxury brands, but certainly for more discerning consumers who, who wanted to actually be not considered to be just uh, very uh, obnoxious and, uh, and showing off, but actually being more refined. So the British luxury brands can uh, do very well in that segment because that's how we are perceived in those markets, being very individual, unique, and, and heritage. And also one of the very distinct characteristics of British luxury brands are the history and the stories behind those brands and where they are coming from, uh, where they're going from here. And that have been manifested by so many tourists from China and from India who come here to buy luxury brands because they feel by coming to this country to buy the brands, they get experience, they get the whole experience of that luxury rather than just get the, the, the physical objects. 
and that just demonstrates how important they feel when they come here, look at the countryside, look at the, the manor houses, look at the castle, look at the lifestyle, the, the, the royalty lifestyle, and they somehow get the story behind it and therefore they will value their belongings uh, that they purchased from here and they can bring them back, then talk to, uh, tell their friends. Could you give me your impression um, about how the Chinese consumer views the difference between a brand such as Prada, for example, and an old British heritage brand for with which they might not be so familiar? The, one of the challenges, I think, for, for House of Britannia, for the British investors who wanted to nurture those heritage brands which are not yet being made a big uh, name in those new markets, is to make sure there is awareness in, in, the, in, in, in the public about those brands and then to position it because uh, the first challenge is to be aware so that they are aware of the, ro you know, the royal warrants for example that is a, a stamp of approval I think that's really important even if this brand has not been um, made aware in, in that particular market if they know it ca carries with it a royal warrants immediately the association will be at the level that they wanted to, to know more and they think that is tailored for their needs. As you know, the House of Britannia is specifically targeting Far Eastern markets for the growth of its business. Do you see those markets as remaining strong for the next 10, 20 years? It's always difficult to make predictions, uh, but if you put, my, put me on spot, I would say it's definitely going to grow for a quite number of years because it has gone through probably by to date the toughest uh, toughest uh, test which is the financial crisis uh, since 2008 and and also now the government clamping down of the corruption uh, which might have contributed in the past to some of the purchase of those luxury brands and so it has actually uh, stood quite firm in terms of the market demand despite all this uh, tur you know turbulent environment and I believe that it will still be growing because primarily it will be private consumption uh, rather than the other consumption which are subject to political risks.